Hello and a very warm welcome to Tokyo for quarterfinals day at the Yonix Japan Open 2011. The 30th anniversary of this particular tournament and it is also event number eight on the 12 tournament OSIM BWF World Super Series. The elite tier of tournaments, the Super Series, 12 each year. And then, of course, the Super Series finals will be the 13th event of the year, of course, as far as the OSIM BWF Super Series is concerned. Well, it all started in January at the Malaysian Open, and the following week it was Korea. And Korea made history because, of course, it was the first ever Premier Super Series event. Five of the 12 tournaments this year promoted by the BWF to Premier status. And it really has lifted the Super Series. All our players are attending so many of these big tournaments. Well, as I say, it's quarterfinals day today. We have five matches for you. And my goodness, what a way we're getting off to start. We're starting with men's doubles and the 2009 winners. Of course, the Indonesians are also the Olympic champions. They're up against a new pair of Ko and Lee from Korea. Then we've got mixed doubles and the home players of Sato and Matsua up against former finalists from Denmark. Then women's doubles and a Korean pair that really have been struggling with injury problems of late, Ha and Kim. They're up against the home favourites of Mizuki Fuji and Oreka Kakiwa. Following that, women's singles and between those two players, they won this title three times. The new world champion, Wang Ihan, the two-time former champion, up against the Dane Tina Baun, who of course really kick-started her career by winning this title in 2007. And then, of course, the last of our quarterfinals this afternoon will be the holder and the world number one, Lee Chong-Wei, up against Kenichi Tago of Japan in a repeat of last year's All England final. Well, there we have it. There is the first of our quarterfinals. It is the former champions, 2009 champions and current Olympic champions, Marcus Kido and Hindra Seti won the number six seeds up against Ko Sung Hyun and Lee Yong Day of Korea. Well, the players just waiting in the wings to be announced on to court. This magnificent arena here, the Tokyo Metropolitan Gymnasium. We've had six courts earlier on throughout the competition. Now we're just down to three courts at quarterfinal stage. Well, all four players coming on to court know all about these big matches. The Indonesians, Marcus Kido and Hendra Setiawan, as I say, won this title back in 2009. Sadly, last year, they were unable to defend that title because of injury problems. So they withdrew from the tournament, despite being the number two seeds last year. Well, if everybody's a talking point, it is about the Koreans go something and leave your day because they're not a normal partnership. I say that because they have played two tournaments previously. Earlier this year, they played the US and Canadian Opens. They won them both, but playing with different partners, of course, goes to the usually plays with Yu Yong Sung. And they are currently ranked number four in the world. And as far as Lee Yong Day is concerned, he and Jung Jae Sung last week won the China Masters and they're currently number two in the world. So absolutely extraordinary given the fact that we're already into the Olympic qualifying period. Of course, all the results from all these major tournaments go towards world rankings. And those world rankings will determine who qualifies for the London Olympic Games next year. So absolutely vital that partnerships establish themselves, which makes this even more extraordinary that these two Koreans, so highly ranked with other partners, are now playing together. I wonder if we'll see them competing together for the rest of the qualifying period. Well, we'll have to wait and see. Hendra Sepia one on the left as we look at them. 27 years of age. And as you can see, world ranking of seven, but seeded six here. Marcus Kido, also 27 and recently married. Got married on the 10th of July. And of course, as far as these Indonesians are concerned, their win-loss record for the year, well, they've been struggling because poor old Marcus Kido 
has been suffering from typhoid, missed the World Championships because of it. And as you can see, there are two matches so far in the competition. Well, one in double quick time, 21 minutes and 26 minutes respectively against the Indian pair of Rupesh Kumar and Sanabe Thomas and then against Songpong and Sukhit from Thailand. That took just 26 minutes. So looks to me as if the Indonesians are back in tremendous form. Well, not only are Lee Yong Day and Go Sun Kyung not seeded, they have to play the qualifying. But look at their win-loss record. I said they've played two tournaments previously. They won them both. And, of course, their career and this year's win-loss record obviously reflects that at 13 to 0. So, yet to be beaten in international competition. And there you can see the fact that they had to play qualifying. Absolutely extraordinary. But, having played the qualifying, I want to draw your attention to that second round match against Koala Maya and Sato of Japan because that Japanese pair in the very first round put out the number two seeds from Denmark Matthias Bo and Karsten Mogensen for them to then go on and beat that informed Japanese pair shows that this Korean I don't like to say scratch pairing but very new pairing really are in tremendous form so are court officials for this match, both of them from Japan. Now, obviously, with the Koreans being a brand new pairing, it means that these two pairs have not met each other previously in international competition. There you have it, 30th anniversary of the Yonix Japan Open. Oh, goodness, that makes me feel old. I was here for the first ever event. I was very young, of course, at the time. But watching the players now. and This has been a tournament along with the All England Championships that has a wonderful tradition, been going for many years. This, of course, the 30th edition of this particular event. And... As I've said previously, there are certain tournaments around the world that all the players want to do well at, and it's a certain status. The All England is one, and certainly in my opinion, the Japan Open is another. Okay, stop praying. So the umpire calls the players. Ladies and yeah. gentlemen, on my right, Mark Stowe and Andrew Sitiran in Mission. And on my left, Ko Sunshun and Iyonde Korea. Mark Stowe to serve to Iyonde. Bravo! Great! So the former champions, the reigning Olympic champions from Indonesia, Marcus Kido and Hendra Setiran, on the far one. side of the court. Up against two players that potentially, as a pair, could be absolutely outstanding. We know they're both individually outstanding with their normal partners. So, here whoa. are the qualifiers whoa. from Korea. Service Ko order. Sung Hyung and one. Lee Yong Day. Oh. Lee Yong Day, there he is. He's the Olympic champion in the mixed doubles, incidentally. Left. All the players have been telling me this week about the drift in this arena and that one end is flying a little bit quicker than the other. The players are very used to that sort of thing. It happens quite naturally in every big arena. The natural air currents will move the shuttle. The shuttle is so light. Two. Two off. But I have to say, these two Korean men look physically so strong. Go Sun Hyung, 24 years of age. His partner there, Lee Yong Day, there he is. Turned 23 on the 11th of September, so only just 23. Service over, 3 2. Oh, it's lovely. Well, 
I know the so, years that I've really been singing the praises of Hindra Setiawan and his wonderful ability to read the shuttle at the front of the court, his anticipation, his control of the net area really is just such a delight to watch but it, as you can see both the Indonesian players have got knees heavily oh. strapped they oh. both had oh. knee injury problems service over and it Three, remains to be four. seen if they really are back to the sort of form that took them to both the Olympic Games gold medal and the Asian Games gold service over 5-3 There he is again. Six, three. Uh, didn't really seem to have to move. Just in the right place at the right time. Always a sign of a great player. Seven, three. Well, this is a very, very good start by the Indonesians. Already opened up a five-point cushion. Nine, three. And in contrast to Setia one, I thought that Lee Yong Day there at the net looked just a little bit off the pace. doubles as well. This is their third tournament in three weeks. They played the Taipei Grand Prix Gold event. They then went on to Chengdu for the China Masters, the Korean team, and here they are in Japan. So playing two events in all three tournaments perhaps is beginning to take its physical toll on the Li Yong Day. Service over 11 fold oh. in double. No doubt who's in command in these early stages. Seven point advantage at the mid-game interval. And I have to say, on the journey down from the hotel for today's quarterfinals, I was fortunate enough to travel on the players' bus and I was having a good old chat to Marcus Kido. He was very relaxed. He was saying he was happy Cold to be one, back playing. And of seconds. course, absolutely Cold delighted one, by his seconds. recent marriage. <laughs> and the Setia one incidentally will be getting married on the 9th of October. So both these Indonesians happy in their personal lives, and 11, that has been three. reflected so far in their play on court. 12, four. Well, doubles to me is all about attacking play. Who can get the shuttle going in a downward direction? And certainly so far in this quarterfinal, the Indonesians have got by far the better of that tactic. Oh, this is extraordinary. Ten point advantage now. Hmm, the Korean coach is looking a little bit glum at the moment. 15 4. 15 4. We've only had six minutes of play. 16 4. Well, I think the Koreans all know that this open game is beyond them, but certainly they'll be wanting to play themselves into a bit of rhythm, a bit of form before the start of the second 17, game. 17 4. 
Oh, I thought this was going to be an explosive start to our quarterfinals. I thought it was going to be absolutely Eighteen. tremendous. It's all been one-way traffic so far. Oh, yes, that's nice. So it's over. 5.18. It really is, Let's I do think, essential that the Koreans get their focus together. Well, he's Six, human after 18. all. Him, but I said making an error. Let. Well, I'm not quite sure what happened there. I thought that Marcus Kido was ready, but obviously he wasn't. Oh, it's clever. Oh, oh, yes. Well, just to prove that he, so too, cover. 19, is very six. sharp at the net. Marcus Kido playing the most delightful little downward dink. Service so over. 7, 19. From so Hendler setting a line, my goodness, he got back now. well. Most players would have had to smash across court, but he smashed down the line. It's 11 game points. I suspect, but I do think, and I've said it already, but I do think that the Koreans need to get themselves more lively. A couple of good rallies, long rallies now, will probably get them yeah. into the rhythm, and that's certainly not helping them. The error on the serve. First game won by Marc Chido and Hendra Sejeran, 21-10. The umpire confirming the score, 21-10. I make that just a little over nine minutes which, quite frankly, I'm astonished about. The error on serve from Go Sun Kyung. game to the Indonesians. confirmation, Well, the Indonesian coach there, very animated as always when he talks to his players, Marcus Kido and the rest of you one, I should say. Mr. Kido, sub, no change, you sub, you sub. Okay. Yeah, the umpire just checking that it is indeed Marcus Kido who will start. Of course, in badminton, if you start in the first game, there's no reason why you have to start in the second as the first server of your pair. So that's why the umpire just checks that out, makes sure okay. he's got his notepad and keeps in control of what's happening. Second game, love all, break. Just 
good judgment was indeed long of that back line. Desperately want to see a little more fight in the rallies from the Koreans, and there's already signs of that. We've only had one rally. There's definite signs of it. Service over. One on. Well, I said he was a strong physical athlete. Go Sun Kyung. The strength on his backhand to whip that cross court. Superb. Service over to off. Well, I think the Indonesians have realized that it's a long day. And he's perhaps struggling with his form at the moment. wears contact lenses and perhaps just a little bit of dirt or perspiration okay. got Let's in his go. eye there and it I know it can be very uncomfortable well, the time just taken sort that out two all service over three two a very very Ball, good serve two. skimmed oh. over the net and then the shuttle was dipping that was a good serve too but marcus Kido will two. be disappointed with his opportunity missed there Indonesians absolute over. masters Five. of the channel attack and they very much prefer the formation of Marcus Guido. Though he's the shorter of the two players, he likes to be at the back of the court, thundering down the smashes, getting his partner Setio One involved in the net. There they are, same formation again. That's what they look to achieve in every rally. Four, five. Now it's not saying that the players don't have the capability to play in the opposite formation, but that's certainly the way they prefer. And in my opinion, that's the way they play best. Oh, that's nice. Good change of pace. Over six, five. Sorry, six, four. than Five, six. we had in the opening game. do look not necessarily physically tired but they look so, emotionally oh. tired they look drained so the difficulty in seven six after three tournaments in three oh. weeks of picking themselves up staying just as highly motivated nice oh just to prove Nine, me wrong the young day just a perfect serve and brushes the shuttle off the top of the tape another good serve oh, 
goodness, that is wild. Cam Thick must have lost sight of the shuttle in the lights in this lovely arena because that was nowhere near. Oh, clever. Called good. Service over. Seven, Great lift ten. by the Indonesians. Oh, it was plumb on the line. Perfection. Oh, low serve oh. is short of the mark. Eleven, Error on seven, serve. And it means that we go to the mid-game interval. Contrast to the opening game, it's the Koreans who had the advantage, a four-point advantage to be precise. Yeah, was indeed short of that front service line. Kang Kun Jin, one of their coaches. Court one, 20 seconds. Court one, 20 seconds. Okay. Well, the two Korean players. 11, Silver 7, and bronze break. medalists in the men's doubles from the recent World Championships, but of course with different oh. partners. So, when you look at that, you assume Service they should over make eight, a good 11. combination. Up. Just haven't found their rhythm, I don't think, to maximum capacity so far. That's short, yeah, got what it deserved. 9 11. There's just 11. Very, very slight hesitation, isn't there, with the Koreans? sound on that occasion. Service From over 12. Go Sun Hyun. Service over 11. 12. Long, but the initial stages of that rally Service once again it was just 11. wonderful to watch Setia one intercept at the net. Opportunity for the Trump. young day. Oh, oh. Yes. Delightful Trump. change of pace from the Olympic mixed doubles champion. Look at that. Super. Indonesians back in their defensive stance, couldn't react to it. Oh, my word! Well, went for it, went for the backhand smash. Did Hendra Setia one. Didn't find the winner, and then he was so far out of position. Doubles is all about trying to take those half chances.
I always think it's worth the risk. Service over. Your coaches out there are screaming at me right now, saying, no, you've got to be patient, play the percentage. So, oh, good. Service over. 17, 13. Sheer threat so of Leon Day, whack it up, ready at the net, force Marcus Guido into error. And the reason is surprisingly having won the tournament so far this year. This was a semi-final of the Indonesian Open. Service over, 15, 18. That is absolutely superb. Well, Marcus Guido doesn't Service like the call. 19, 15. Thought that the shuttle had gone long of the back line, but there's been no overall from the umpire. And so the wrong judge's decision stands. Two points away from the second Whoa, game. Rap. Make that one point away. 20, game point, 15. Five game points to level this quarter-final, and one game more. Oh, my goodness. Game. Well, they only needed the one opportunity, but the return of serve Second from game. Marcus Guido had been absolutely Leon extraordinary. 21-15. Umpire confirming game all. that it is indeed one game all. 23 minutes of play, and as you can see, Ko and Lee Second game, 21-15. This was the final rally. Smash into the net. That return of serve really stretching Lee. So it is one game all. Well, once again, the umpire just checking as to which player will start serving. And it is going to be Go Sun Kyung. Okay. Well, if the first two games are anything to go by, it's all going to be dependent on who controls the front of the court. Oh, that's cool, good. Oh, yeah, my goodness, just clipped the outside edge of the line. What a good decision by the line judge. Three, luck. It's going to have to be careful here that they don't allow their opponents to get too far in front. Mm, that's careless, very careless from Marcus Kido. Oh, that's better. Good power play over. from Sethi Oh my goodness, they needed to stop that run of points. Oh, fantastic. My goodness, I could watch him all day when he's playing like that. Not only the reaction speed, he had to be reading what was happening. His anticipation, absolutely brilliant. 
Uh, well, when he's controlling the front of the court, then the Indonesians tend to be winning the rallies. City of Malang, City One. Well, oh. isn't oh. it extraordinary? Four points where they've controlled the nets, they've hit the shuttle in a downward direction, and having been four points adrift, they're now back level. Oh. Oh. Service over. Five. Four. Four. Yes, that, that rally really Six. sort of exemplifying Four. the contrast between the two Indonesian players. Marcus Kido was at the nets, but he couldn't put the shuttle away. He couldn't put his opponents under just quite as much pressure as Seti One is able to do. First over, five, six. It's amazing with the Korean pair, neither Ko, or Lee have ever been in a men's doubles quarterfinal here at the Japan Open. And when you think that how many titles they've won around the world, both of them as individuals with their previous partners, have, between them they've got three world championship silver medals, and yet never in a quarterfinal of the Japan Open. This year, of course, over this is a quarter six, final. Eight. Change of shuttle. Oh, oh. Maybe hoping for a change of fortune. Good serving needed here. Oh, I thought I was going wide. Good defense from Lee. What a good rally. Yeah, longest rally of the match Those so far. Nine, six. Terrific play. The Koreans are really seeing the shuttle. They're defending much better. They're moving their Indonesian opponents at the back of the court from side to side. They're driving the shuttle back on defense. Then moving Mr. forward Reed, to the not, net. Nothing about Nothing about the towel. Oh, I'm not okay, quite sure what the umpire was saying there. Oh, sorry. Oh. Towel. Ah. A little bit of housekeeping there. Got to keep all your possessions in the baskets provided at the side of the court. Quite right, too. Like it, like it, nice and tidy. Service over seven, nine. Are the sort of intriguing rallies that I hoped for from the start of the match, but the opening game, the Indonesians were just completely dominant. Koreans off the pace. And it really is simmering nicely into very, very intriguing battle. Say what a serve. Like in. No, in. 
Well, the extraordinary thing is we don't actually have a center line judge. Let's take a look at that. Look at the center line. I guess. Oof. Well, I can see. Umpire saying I can see the center line. That was desperately close, I have to say. But the umpire has made the decision. And it means that we're all level. Nine all deciding game. He's a very quiet man, is Hendra Satyawan. But he's so creative on a badminton court. Sees gaps. Oh. Such an awareness. Oh, oh it's flipped again. Oh. oh. Wow. 11-9, in the ball, change ends. I don't think the Koreans were terribly happy about the serve, but it wasn't called. And Lee Yong Day playing the shuttle back, which of course is not allowed. And will be played by Go Sun Hyung. Well, I think that's coach Bamungas. And I think he's urging them to go for things at the net. You have to control that Cold net area. Twenty seconds. Cold one. Twenty seconds. Well, the Indonesians were five nine adrift, so they're on a run of six straight points. Okay. in pairs in the quarter-final of the men's doubles. Whoa. Whoa. 12, 9. Yeah. Their run of good fortune continues. Good fortune and good play. Oh. Oh. What a oh. jump. Oh. Well, Marcus Guido okay. is not the Nine. tallest of athletes. 165 that's about five foot five inches but my goodness the elevation he gets on his jump smash which creates an angle and created the winning opportunity well eight straight points it's going wide nine straight points for the indonesians nine is absolutely nine. extraordinary. No way I would have predicted this. Oh, no. What on earth nine. has happened? 11 straight points. Interesting, isn't it? Both the Korean players just looking across the adjoining court. Concentration levels appear to be wavering. That's 
goal line. Serves over 17, 10. Well, suddenly the Indonesians, and all credit to them, they've just tightened up their game. And the Koreans, in contrast, have fallen to pieces. A lot you can do about that though because of the quality of City of one. Oh, oh, oh. We're up on the low serve, so shuttle flipped the top 11, of the tape, 18. got deflected. Oh. Fell well short of that front service line. Okay. Mr. Kid, come here. suspect that the umpire was saying, come on, Mr. Kido, you've got to get ready a little quicker. around the blue bit well, I suppose when you've got such an advantage you can afford the odd error but when you're playing against opposition as good as the Koreans I think it's a little dangerous now six points in it well that won't help the Koreans cause service over 19 12 Asking the umpire to keep the towel down, wants to take his time, recompose the thoughts. Of course, you know, it did cross my mind okay, as to whether Marcus Kido was really 100% match fit after suffering from typhoid and missing the World Championships in Wembley. And maybe just needed a little break, towel down, get his breath back. Good serve. Fourteen, nineteen. Oh. Oh. That's wide. Service over. Good judgment from Ready. Mark Espino. Knew immediately it was going to go wide of the mark. So now six match points. For Kido and Setia one, the number six seeds. Game. And that's it, the first time of asking. 21-10, 15-21, 21-14 in the deciding game in a match lasting 40 minutes. 40 minutes for three games, I can tell you is pretty quick game. Not the it's longest of rallies. Marcus Kido, Andrew Rosetian, 21 10, 15, 21, 21, 14. Well, one part confirming that it is the Indonesians, the number six seeds, who will be in the semi final tomorrow. And we'll have to wait and see who their opposition is because in the bottom half of the draw, which these two pairs are, there's Asan and Septano. And Chinese pair of Liu and Chu. 
for they know that they're safely through to the semi-final the former champions and there's once again confirmation of the score so the players take leave of the court a little wave from marcus Guido. and Lee promised so much looked so impressive early on in the tournaments but they've suffered today their first ever defeat as a pair but they've been beaten by the Olympic champions and Asian Games gold medalists so as they take leave we can watch the highlights from that men's doubles